Um, I'm Lauren Jansen. I've been a member at Elite for about three years. Um, my husband actually has worked at Elite for four years, um, and he worked initially in the pool and then took a job as a trainer, and that's when I had joined. Okay. So. And what do you tend to utilize at the club? Um, kind of varies on the season, because obviously summertime I'm not inside as much as I am outside kind of thing, but I really enjoy the Group X classes that they have. I really, really enjoy the yoga classes that they have. Um, I really like um, meeting a lot of the different members. It's been very helpful, like we were new homeowners and they're really good for resourcing because neither Joe or I grew up in the Milwaukee area. So it was really nice because people are so friendly and they're so willing to help. So Great, and tell me a little bit about some of your hobbies outside of the club. Um, that's a good question. I love traveling, do a lot of traveling, a lot of hiking. Um, I have grew up in the UP, my family is from there. So we have land up near Escanaba, Michigan, so we're up there a lot. They a lot of toys up there. We have four-wheelers and kayaks and just being away from the world, and so that's a lot of fun. To you think. do a lot of biking too. I do, here. yeah, yes, yes. That was something I started in 2010, um, road cycling, and I kind of got um, associated with the biking, um, you know, people that just out cycle us. Like, they're just great people. Like lovers of life, love to be outside, super friendly, just a really good crowd, good vibes, all that kind of stuff. And you said you've done some charity rides, mm -hmm. so I think there's a few that you've done in particular. Yep, recently. this last summer was actually a really good year. So I did, uh, my mom and I always do the ride for the arts. It's kind of like the intro to the summer kind of thing because it's the first week in June. So we always do that one. And then I have volunteered for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society scenic shore ride that they do yep. from Mequon to Manitowoc, the Manitowoc to Sturgeon Bay. Mm -hmm. So I did the first day of the ride with that was uh, 75 miles. And then um, we volunteer the second day. I have some friends that are very involved with the um, whole production of it. So it's always kind of fun to team up with them and give back. And it's also, uh, I don't need to ride 75 miles two times <laughs> all weekend because I still have to go back to work on Monday. So Kind of the best of both worlds. Yes, absolutely. Cool. absolutely. And you're here in your scrubs today, so can you tell me a little bit about your job? Yeah, I can do that. Um, I work at the Milwaukee VA. I've been there a little over four years now. I've been a nurse for six and a half. I currently work in the recovery room, which is uh, one of my favorite areas. That was always kind of where I thought I saw myself. And now that I'm there, I absolutely love what I do. I love working with the veterans. They truly are awesome people. You know, they served us, and that's an awesome way to give back um, to them. And also, it's it's uh, very refreshing because every day is very different. I never have the same patients that have the same surgeries at the same time. There's always a unique course that happens, and a lot of variety every day. Yeah. Is yep. Yep. Cool. Great. Well. As much as we love talking to you about your interests yeah. and your hobbies, the reason we're interviewing you here today is because you are actually diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension. I am. So <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about your initial diagnosis mm -hmm. and then also um, how you were treated and how your lifestyle has changed as a result? So I've always been an active person and more so like when I started to get into college I kind of had some unexplained shortness of breath just doing random activities. So I'd have a really good day of working out and then a not so good day and I always just kind of associated with well I ran up a hill while we were sledding and I don't typically do that because you know you're wearing heavy gear and I don't really run much. So that was okay well why am I so out of breath? Well it ended up um, Joe was actually teaching English in South Korea um, at the time and I had gone over to visit him during uh, my Christmas break mm -hmm. and I came back and then I was at a boot camp class at the YMCA um, when I went to school in Waukesha and I actually face planted at the top and they call that a syncopal episode so I fainted oh. at the top of uh, these three flights of stairs and then I was really trying to figure out what happened after that <laughs> and I had like all these spaces over the top of me and luckily people in the group were um, EMTs and first responders and nurses and all that kind of stuff so I was in very good hands but Company. yep yep they body boarded me down they took me to the hospital um, it was the first time I've ever been inpatient slash in the ER ever because I was 21 when that happened. Mm -hmm. um, so they kept me overnight. I told my parents to stay because I'm originally from Green Bay area. I said don't come down until they find something if they find something because I mean this could be fluky. They were thinking I may have had um, a blood clot that went to my lung because I had been on a plane from South Korea like five days prior okay. and that's a 12-hour plane flight and that's a really long time. Mm -hmm. So so they were checking me out for that and 
there was, that was negative, but they kind of kind of kept me because there must have been a couple pink flags here and there that they're like, okay, hey, we're not really sure what's going on. So um, they called the uncalled cardiologist um, the next morning and they ended up doing an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart. And that's actually um, the easiest way to diagnose pulmonary hypertension. But it's also, you know, like it's, it's often looked past as it's very misdiagnosed. Like people are like, okay, well, you're out of shape. Um, you have asthma, you have, you're just lazy. You know, there's, there's a ton of, ton of stuff. Like I was really, really fortunate that once they diagnosed me, um, it's such a rare heart condition and the treatment options are so specialized that there's only, I think there's only like, at the time there were only three hospitals in the state of Wisconsin that treat it. Luckily, two of them were in Milwaukee. So that was just a short hop, skip and a jump. Um, so I was a very studious nursing student. So I actually had my book with me and I kind of opened it up and I was like, hmm, what is this? And that was a bad mistake because uh, if you ever Google pulmonary hypertension, it's kind of a death sentence, depending on what source you're reading, especially back then. So, and that was only eight years ago. It's been um, kind of a diagnosed and the first medication that came on the market was in like the early nineties. So it's kind of a new, new area of, medicine and research and all that kind of stuff. So you're diagnosed yes. and luckily you were diagnosed properly mm -hmm. and you had the resources yep. available to you. So yep. then this is, I mean, you're young, this is a huge change in your life. So what needed to happen if you were, you know, this is um, like you said, this would have been a death sentence. Right. Absolutely. So what, what um, well, I was pretty much told I was going to be on IV medication, which meant they had to put a line that's directly planted in my chest that goes to the top of my heart and delivers medication constantly. So, um, I was, like I said, a full-time nursing student at the time, and I was trying to manage, you know, my new health components at the same time as getting started with the semester and everything like that. So it was quite a bit to take on. Well, uh, my boyfriend is still in South Korea, halfway across the world, and like really wondering what's happening. So yeah, and your parents are up in the yeah UK yeah. Well, they were they were back after after I got initially diagnosed. I got transferred to St. Luke's, and that's when I got to meet my doctor. Um, Diane Zwicky, who is absolutely fantastic at what she does and world renowned and stuff like that. She's a big, big pioneer in the early 90s um, for research and all that kind of stuff. So she's still at St. Luke's and that's where I still go. Great. So you have this pump now. Mm -hmm. Do you mind showing us? Sure, what no that's problem. Like? So it's not very big. Um, when I was initially diagnosed, I was on IV medication, then I was off for about five years and then they put me back on. Um, but the original pump was actually like this big. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so not, not very conducive to doing much. Um, I, I wore a really cool fanny pack at the time, so I was very happy when they had the smaller model, which is like not even the size of your hand. So, so yeah, I mix uh, medication every 48 hours. So um, it takes quite a bit because you have to be, they consider it a sterile thing. So, you know, like you have to keep everything very clean. I have two dogs at home that love to run around and race and stuff like that. So, you know, you gotta, it, it, it's a process. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take very long. I kind of got it down to a science. It takes me about six minutes now to mix, but yeah, it's something that requires my full attention. Like my phone, music, TV, everything is away from me while I'm doing this. Cause I like to be really focused. Okay. And you do this while you're traveling too. Yes. Yes, um, that has never stopped me. I will also give my doctor a lot of credit because um, she never puts limits on what I can do. She's only put limits on what I can do like maybe once. Um, and that's when I got restarted on IV medication um, just because I needed to kind of give my body a rest for a little while, a couple months. Um, but yeah, she has always encouraged me to go out and see the world and stuff like that. So I've been to, um, while I was on IV, I've been to a lot of different places in Eastern Europe. We did a trek through there for three weeks. Um, I've been to France. We've been to the desert twice. Most recently, we were just in Arizona a couple weeks ago. Um, I, I mean, road trips all over the place, Canada. You always have to pack your stuff though because this drug isn't approved in every country you go to. So you always kind of have to know your resources. So I always have to call my specialty pharmacy and get all this kind of stuff arranged and I have to have notes. And it's really fun to try and get through um, foreign airports when they have no idea what this kind of thing is especially because I have to carry all of my stuff and there's vials of things and they're kind of like what the heck is that you know <laughs> so it takes takes a little bit it's not like I'm not used to it you just kind of mm -hmm. all right well what next what what's what's your it's it's always kind of fun because you get different stories so yeah 
great. Yeah. Well, and that's great that you've kind of found a ma- way of managing that. Um, why do you stay active? What keeps you going? What gives you perspective on your situation? I mean, My, you're young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know, it's crazy. Um, I, like I said, I feel very fortunate to be able to do what I do, so I will do what I do while I can. So we went to Paris um, about a year and a half ago and uh, we could have taken the elevator to the top, but I said, no, I want to take the stairs because I can do that right now. So I'm not going to say it was easy because I don't think it's easy for anybody to climb 800 stairs, but you know, it was, it's something that I do because I can. So good. Great. So um, the last thing I'd like to touch on here is just how the pulmonary hypertension and your career have mixed and how Joe's kind of played a factor. Uh, well, I told Joe to run when I got diagnosed. I said, you don't have to stick around, you know, if you want to go live your life. And he's a way bigger person than that. So he kind of stuck with me through all of it, even though he was like half a world away. But um, he was really good about always being involved. And, you know, he comes with me to all of my appointments. And <laughs> if I talk about it long enough, I get teary eyed. So um, he's such a good support. Like anything I need, he's always there. Has anyone ever doubted your capabilities? Um, I don't want to say they've doubted, but I think I've wowed a lot of people in my day. Um, I don't think, I mean, I've met other pulmonary hypertension patients. There's a lot of really great support groups. There's one in Milwaukee, um, kind of through the different hospitals. Um, and there is one, you know, online and stuff like that. And I think what I try to keep people motivated is, you know, like you can do this, even if it's like a slight degree of what you think you could. Cause I know like five years ago, I never saw myself climbing mountains ever, ever, especially with like, um, the ease that it's, you know, like I've worked really hard to get to, you know, in that process and stuff like that, like strengthening myself physically, mentally, emotionally. Cause I won't say that I, it's not a daily struggle, but I, like I said, I've been very fortunate to be treated the way that I am and have my body react to the medication and stuff like that. Cause it can be very, very limiting to certain people. So I always try and look at different stories and be like, wow, you know, like look what you're able to do. And then, you know, just set your goal just this much higher because we're blessed to live in a world with Western medicine that, you know, not everybody else in the world has. So if it's working for you and you can do that, that's really awesome. Thank you so much, Bob.